This is only one of the many scenarios, what is going to happen in the 2024. And of course, if you would think for a normal country, his voice be much more significant. Hi, here is Mark Villenius, the traveling futurist. Did you know that presidential election in the United States in 2024 might be the last elections they ever have? Let me explain. This is one of the scenarios that I have made for the United States in that situation. And why I'm saying this is that, well, if Trump gets to be the number one candidate for the Republicans, and if he, for some reasons, get a landslide victory, turning United States very Republicans, he would make everything to stay there forever. He would deny any loss as he did the last time but this time there might not be a same type of the opposition or counter force because maybe republicans have been able to seize all the power not just the republicans but those on the right side which actually don't appreciate so much of the democratic constitution as we heard since the January 6, a lot of Republicans actually went with denying that there was a problem with Trump not accepting the election result or that there was no problem that these hooligans went to see, seize the Congress. I guarantee to you that this is only one of the many scenarios what is going to happen in the 2024 but it's one of those scenarios that we need to be thinking and seeing what type of the evidence we have for that type of the scenario to materialize what other options there are of course we know by now that biden 99% will actually be the candidate for the Democrats. For the Republicans, well, DeSantis is very strong, as we know. It is quite likely that he will be the candidate, but a lot will be at stake. Also because for the Democrats, the situation is that they have a unique opportunity now after the four-year period of trump to seize against at least these two presidential and this may happen actually if american economy will be well up and running by the time the real election process starts but we are not there as yet but we're going to see that and if there is a strong american economy at that time that obviously will work for the favor of Biden and the other way around. If there are significant problems, recessions, inflation, strangling the economy and so forth and the people, well, then the Republicans may have the upper hand. The other thing that has been kind of a long process within the American politics is that it has become a type of a scene that the two parties are departing from each other. This is something that has been kind of a steadily coming with the result that there is not so much bipartisanship. Now, the war in Ukraine has brought some of that back into the stage in Senate and in the House. But by and large, we see that there is a trend that the, the opinions are becoming wider apart. And of course, if you would think for 
a normal country, I would say then there would be a space for a third on the fourth party of peer. But because US political system and elections have geared in a such a way that it's very hard for any third or fourth party to become a significant player in the field, we probably will be seeing this type of a two-party system to continue from here on. The problem with America is of course not only what is happening inside but what is the American's role in the world. And as we have seen now in the last years, the years when Biden has been in power, Biden has on the one hand be very cautious and run away from this Afghanistan for instance and been kind of a very cautious in, in getting a real sort of interventions from American side in other parts of the world. But he still sees that America is the one and the only country that can be kind of present in almost any part of the world. And this is what he does. The role of America in the global society and the economy is something which is also played out in this game where it comes to ask what American public opinion thinks about involvement of the US. And particularly if there are troubled times inside America, the tendency is to, to think that, well, we should be just taking care of our own things. While if the economy is booming and, and there is a certain feeling of the safety and trust in the society, then America can be again more active in the world. Then we are asking this because in 2024, if America is very active internationally and that plays a big part in the role, Biden is of course the one that can show that, well, not only because he's been in the president, but also because he has this 50 year long expertise on foreign issues. That's what he can show in every respect that he's superior there. But if there is more talk about the internal matters, then I think Republicans, DeSantis in particular, will have a, a much more to say about that and his voice be much more significant. All these aspects are significant. Me as a futurist, what I think is this, we're getting in any case into the world where there is a more connectivity, more internationality. And what that means is that the big countries like United States or China or India, they are becoming even bigger because in this type of international world, the size matter more and more. And what I feel is that when we think about that who is going to lead the United States in the situation where the role of the big countries are becoming even more pervasive, even if at the same time there is a lot of decentralization happening as well, but that the big countries have a major role to play when we are getting into this type of more interconnected world, then again, the role of America being a kind of a, a bit like a global police will be more significant, even more significant than it is today. That's actually what is at least expected. That's not, of course, necessarily the recipe that America is following. And that again, I presume is dependent on how well America is faring internally. In other words, how America can reinvent itself, find a new way of running the country because America has a lot of problems. This infrastructure in most of the states are in, in terrible conditions and there is a lot of also happening this type of situation where the poor are, 
are becoming poorer. With that type of a level of social security that America currently has, it cannot guarantee that there is any more a good opportunities for everybody, which is the kind of a, the, the heart of the ideal of the United States. These are some of the reflections, but as I said, I think the long-term way to look at this thing is that America need to accept that it has a significant role in the world, but it also has to accept that in order to do that, it has to reinvent itself and do it in a such a way that it looks more into the future than into the past. And that's the ultimate challenge that America has. Subscribe to my channel where you're gonna see and learn more about the future.